Some people seem to think that once you do, you spit in a tube, that this magical tree is just going to just populate <laughs> with, with all of your ancestors and then you're going to then just know and it's going to take you right back to Africa. No, no, that's not how it works. Hi, I'm Dexter and let's talk genealogy. In this video, I'll show you how you can get started on your Caribbean ancestry research. The first thing, start with what you know. And I mean, start with yourself. <laughs> Write down your name, where you were born, and when that was, and the names of your parents and your siblings as well. And just complete that family group to begin with. And if you've got any half siblings, I put those in with their father or mother as well, so that you've got everything correctly documented. And if you already know people's birthdays, put those in as well. And once you've completed that group, then you start looking at both parents and you split those into fathers and mothers family and start off with what are your aunts and uncles, so siblings of your parents. And do the same thing again and put the names of their parents. So now you've got yourself and your siblings, your parents, your aunts and uncles and your grandparents and so you should have uh, then by this point uh, quite a lot of information to begin with. Next, visit your family and talk to them. There are a lot of things that often in Caribbean families no one ever really tells you <laughs> unless you ask. I'm the youngest of six children and for some reason people seem to think that I was um, around when all of these things happened. There's a 12 and a half year gap between me and my next sibling and so it's just sort of like, they're like, oh yeah, we thought you were there. I was like, no, but that was 1975. They're like, oh yeah, you weren't there. I've just had to be a bit nosy. And what sort of things should you be, be talking about? Well, are there any family stories? Are there any things that can help you glean any information about, um, you know, what jobs people did? what part of um, the, the country that they grew up, if they were born in, in England, where? Or were they um, somewhere else? You know, people have moved, um, especially in the, the, the Caribbean community, have moved all over the world. So just find out if anyone's had anything um, like that um, in, in their background, because that's going to help you to make sense of any documents that, that you may encounter. Now, after you've, you've done this, you now have to do a bit of detective work and just see what's around the house. And, you know, are there any photo albums? Try to get some of those, those images. If you haven't already got those digitized, maybe that could be something that you can start off with by scanning some of those, those images in uh, family photo albums. And, you know, are there any other clues around? Are there any recipe books? Are there any magazines or anything else that would you know give you any any information you need to at this point try to work out exactly which island in the west indies that they've come from what parish exactly within within that island that that, that you're looking at and you will then get a lot more information the other really important thing that you need to go hunting for funeral booklets now in, in the Caribbean and in black culture, particularly in the Western world, we're really, really big on funeral booklets. And these are genealogy gold. You've got not just the name and the date of birth and date of death of that person, um, but you've also got information about um, if there was a, a memorial or, or religious service in a church, you'll know what denomination that was, and also if there was a burial, there will be hints about where the internment would be, and so that's that's really helpful so that you, you know sort of where you should be looking for, for records later on. But also, inside there you've got a list of survivors. That survivors list is your key to completing a family group and then you'll know this is a list of all of the family members that were alive at that time, at the time of that of that funeral when, when that occurred. 
So you've got a whole host of information in there and you um, often have names of some extended family members as well. So special cousins, special friends, and then this helps you to understand how that person lived within their community, which is, is really helpful for you to, to make sense of what it really was like at that time when you were living. You may you know, even have a list of a running order of service, so you get to see who was the one that was asked to do the eulogy and all of the, the scripture readings and you know what hymns were selected that sort of thing that can also give you some 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 nice color and uh, often there's a tribute section so you can get some little stories and little tidbits in in the tribute section but just have a look and you see if you can find any of those types of things around that's going to just help so much to to confirm some information because someone had to gather this information and put it together um, Along with that, a lot of those booklets end up forming the basis of online memorial pages that have um, the survivors list and, and the um, information about the date of death and, and, and where exactly they were being interred. But you've also got, um, sometimes you just go through the, the, the notes as well that people leave. That can also give some, some hints. Some people sometimes share some, some really lovely stories and their uh, memories that will help you to piece together where um, they've come from and you know what that was like in that community where, where that person lived. And all within this, you can also get some confirmation about you know which island the parish religious affiliation as well as you know the time period that that person lived in uh, so that's just uh, incredible so once you've now gathered all of this information you've got to document it somehow and just start off with a little notebook you don't need to do anything particularly elaborate at this point um, you just make sure that you've got um, everything correctly um, written down and you've got the dates when you've actually collected that information so that you can have a, 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 a log of, of, of what you've done and, and crucially where you've, you've looked, who you've spoken with and sometimes you can sort of forget little things and so while you're, you're chatting sometimes it's um, good to just ask permission if you can just record that because you know sometimes you get so much information from having conversations so uh, just 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 ask uh, once you've shown a keen interest people tend to open up you know quite a lot so it's it's really nice so you've written down what you know you've spoken to family members and you've had a look around and you've then made some notes and you've hopefully found some funeral booklets um the aunties all have funeral booklets just ask them they've probably got some uh, now after you've done that you need to then consider um how else you may want to store this information and you want to then think about um are you going to do this um, using an online tool or are you going to use standalone software or do you want to keep it all offline on paper for some time? Um, I use um, Ancestry for uh, documenting my tree. Um, I just found find it really, really easy. At the beginning stages when you're just collecting this basic information, you don't necessarily need to um, use the paid service, uh, but the later on um, you, you may wish to, to do that as well. But I find it just really neat and and easy and you all also have some uh, privacy control so although uh, people that are living um, are not um, you can't see the information if you don't have um, direct access to that tree if it's public um, sometimes I I'm not quite sure about some information and I don't really want to have um, things that are not correct because um, this may mislead others but it's up to you how you want to to go about doing that so now that you've collected all of this information on the immediate family groups that, that you uh, know of and that you can contact, then you want to start looking for vital records to cross-check all of the information that you've, you've collected. And this 
within the UK, you can start off um, Ancestry has this or Find My Past if they've, they've got some of the, the record sets um, that you can find some of the birth registers and marriage registers and the um, uh, voter records. Ancestry has a really neat feature called hints and so sometimes if you've put in um, enough information you'll already get a hint for a document and then you can start um, vetting that information and cross-checking it with what you know and just put everything um, into context and look at the timeline and just see you know the sequence of events and just make sure that, that makes sense before you add any of, of, of those records. And so when I say vital records, I'm talking about um, birth records, marriage records, death records, and you want to make sure that you have the religious affiliation because that's going to really help you because um, if, for example, you know, if you come from a long line of Anglicans or Methodists or whatnot, uh, when you then uh, actually start looking for those, those family relatives, um, you will um, need to look at the, the church records as well. And I'm going to talk a bit more about these record sets in another video, but um, you've just got to cross-check your information, anything that you get. And the oral history often has a lot of clues in it. So that's why it's just absolutely important to make sure that you talk to, to your, your family members. So now this is, you know, doing your research if you're still in the UK. And then now you will get to the point where you need to then ask a few more questions um, to find out exactly when people may have um, migrated to the UK um, or um, whether or not, um, well, maybe you might be the one that migrated and so you will have some more information there, but just find out um, the time periods and from that point you'll be able to make sense within the records. Uh, often uh, there would be like the main breadwinner would um, come uh, to the UK and then one by one the children would then be sent for and that could be some some indication there if this is um, in the Windrush generation there are some um, earlier um, migrations from the West Indies and you may not have anyone that you can ask but you can glean some of this information by looking in the census for the uh, place of, of birth uh, of that individual and then that can help you cross check some of the information. Now the next thing that I would suggest is to go and have a look at the Family Search wiki page for the um, island, territory or country that, that you'd want to um, find out information about for your family. And um, these wikis are so helpful. You get uh, some historical context as well in some cases and you really got to know the history to understand when you're actually needing to look in certain um, record sets because not all of the islands in the Caribbean um, were um, British for the entirety of the colonial period. For example, um, the Virgin Islands where I'm from uh, were a Dutch colony, um, an English colony and very briefly the Danes almost um, uh, took um, it from the Dutch and the English, but then it then became um, English and, and then absorbed into the British Empire. And looking at some of those those records, there are um, lots of um, you know, nice bits of, of information that, you know, far back. But more recently, um, if you are looking for ancestors from Trinidad and Tobago, for example, um, they um, were part of the Spanish Empire in the in in the in the New World um, up until um, the very early um, 1800s. So um, you need to just be aware of some of these because you might be searching in the records frantically. Oh, can't find something, but then you realize that oh wait, this I need to look in some other records, <laughs> and um, you need to also just have Google Translate ready at at, at some point. So I've had to look at records um, that. Um, are in um, Dutch and in 
um, Danish. Yeah, I know. Um, but understanding that context is really helpful. Now, this book. This is the most amazing book for looking into your Caribbean um, ancestry research. So Tracing Your Caribbean Ancestors and National Archives Guide by Guy Granham. So this book is offering a really uh, concise summary with resources as to how to go about searching for your, your, your ancestors. There are also some um, easy online guides um, that are available from the um, Southwark Library. I'll leave a link in, in, in the description so that you can have a look um, at, at these resources. Now, tracing your Caribbean ancestors, um, we've got um, a, a very nice um, bit of uh, information uh, similar to what I'm telling you, like how to get started. But then once you've got this information, how do you start looking at um, colonial records? What 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 is the colonial office? What you know? What um, you know? Information did did, did they collect? And um, what types of of, of records um, were collected um, by the government and when? And um, so the the whole concept of a birth certificate is something actually relatively recent. The majority of of people will just have a record in the church records of that particular place. So you find out that information about your family to know what um, religious affiliation people had. You look in the family search wiki to see what records are available for that particular denomination in that, in that particular location, in that parish. Then you can then start um, searching in the records. So this helps you avoid it a lot of wild goose chases and just formulate a clear research question as you're going for each line of, of the family in different family groups and just as you would have done at the very very beginning with your siblings and your parents. Uh, try to complete that family group before you go to another generation back because you're going to have some tips that will come up from looking at some of the other records that um, your direct line may not necessarily um, come up with. And the concept of um, death records as well is something a bit recent. And there'll be some other records that you may end up having to, to look through um, if your ancestors owned any property. Um, and this um, I'm going to cover in a video on, on record sets. Now, all of this uh, is you know quite a lot of work and don't beat yourself up if you you know don't get it all done in one weekend because i mean how can you <laughs> do all of this um some people seem to think that just dna will will solve this but i'm just going to say right now and say it with me do not do dna before doing your paper research do not do DNA until you have done this research because you just, just you get a lot of matches and you just won't know <laughs> um, how any of them um, connect to you and and you know the common ancestry and you just end up with more questions than the answers and it's just completely unhelpful to just have um, this list of people and you don't know how um, any of them could be could be related. I don't know where this has come from, but some people seem to think that once you do, you spit in a tube, that this magical tree is just going to just populate <laughs> with with all of your ancestors, and then you're going to then just know, and it's going to take you right back to Africa. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Not how it works at all. So, just be open-minded when you're going through the, the records and just be uh, consistent with how you're looking at this. Like if you spend like one hour um, in the evening just going through one by one some of these steps, um, you'll be able you know, quite quickly to, to piece together quite a lot and before you know it you'll be on a plane going to do on-site research uh, or at least um, going to the Family History Centre 
to, to go and look at, 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 at records. I hope this video was helpful. Um, if there's anything that I forgot to mention, please uh, make a comment and let me know. And if there's anything that you particularly liked about this or want me to, to cover in a future video, please let me know. Thanks for watching and see you next time.